Welcome back to Power Play on this Monday evening. Justin Trudeau versus Francois Legault. The prime minister says his government is considering going to the Supreme Court to limit the preemptive use of the notwithstanding clause. Quebec's Premier Francois Legault is firing back, though, accusing the prime minister of a, quote, frontal assault on democracy and Quebec. So are the feds picking a fight with Quebec? And if so, why? Let's ask our front bench panel. Joining me this evening, former Liberal Cabinet Minister Miriam Monsef. She's now the CEO of Onward, former communications director to Erin O'Toole, Melanie Parody. She's now the president of Texture Communications. NDP strategist and Monk and Associates principal owner Kathleen Monk is here, as is columnist with Le Devoir, Emily Nicolas. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. My, yeah. my apologies in advance. If the prime minister arrives at cabinet, which we're anticipating, I'll take that live, but we'll be around for the whole evening to kind of weigh in on what we hear. Uh, let's start with the notwithstanding, because it kind of overtook some of the other stuff happening at the cabinet retreat today. Emily, I want to start with you. How is the comments were originally made in La Presse over the weekend and then reiterated this morning by the prime minister. How is that being uh, perceived in Quebec from, from where you sit? Uh, the premier, uh, François, François Legault, was all up in arm uh, actually uh, already on Sunday when that, when that came out uh, in La Presse. And today, essentially, his read of the situation is that um, um, the use of the notwithstanding clause has been used uh, at the National Assembly in a way that's been quite consensual uh, by all parties represented there to essentially every five year reconduct uh, the or, or renew um, some provisions of the Bill 101, which is a core law in Quebec. And so he he uh, made allusions to that uh, and his comment. And obviously, the more uh, famous at this point in contemporary history use of Quebec, uh, the, the, the non-withstanding clause by Quebec has also been uh, Bill 21 and uh, Bill 96. So the bill on, on secularism and, and the, the newest iteration of language, um, the language bill as well. And so those two have been not consensual across all party line. And those are, are, are the two use of the non-withstanding clause that he also says, uh, the, François Legault is about Quebec on TV and something that um, that has been disputed, being disputed, obviously, within Quebec. This is why uh, the case might actually go to the Supreme Court, is because there's people in Quebec who've, who've, uh, who've pushed back against this. But at the same time, there's a strong base for what François Legault is saying, and what he's saying is resonated as, uh, resonating as well with a lot of Quebecers. The question, Kathleen, I kept asking myself, and I, I posed it at one point to Minister Champagne, was like, why now? Because I remember covering Bill 21 in the 2019 election sure. and no party would touch it with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> like no one then was saying, you know what we got to do? Send this to the Supreme Court, get a reference on whether or not this, uh, you know, the, the notwithstanding clause should never preemptively be used. But like something has shifted. What do you think it is? Politics. Okay. Politics, Valley. Yeah. Yeah. Ding, uh, ding, ding. For sure. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And, and why? Because Listen, uh, mapping out to the next election, there is a key a demographic in Quebec. It's an Anglophone demographic. It makes approximately 10% of the population. They're normally federal liberals. Um, and they populate, they, they've got this great concentration in Montreal, in the Gatineau area, and also in the Eastern townships. And frankly, those are pockets of areas that liberals are trying to pick up and, and increase their seat count, right? And increase and, and hold and make sure that other parties don't ping them off. So I think this is less about a fight necessarily with Legault and more about a political fight and how he could be the defender of, um, you know, the, the, the charter and, and, and like something that actually normally a downtown Toronto crowd uh, would actually play to, but he is playing to in Quebec as well. We saw last November when Premier Ford came out with an with standing clause, there was a very quick reaction, and there was that a lot of talk. That wouldn't surprise me, right? Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of talk of this this weird word called disallowance, and this is basically when the federal government can come in and 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 basically uh, devalidate a law, make a, a law that a provincial party has passed as invalid and no longer. But will they? They haven't done that in Quebec precisely. Legault has been hands off. But why is he doing this now? Why is he coming out and saying this to the press? Uh, and why did uh, Premier Legault react so strongly over the weekend? Because I think it is a fight for those progressives in um, in Montreal, in the, con the concentrated Anglos, uh, that, that they would like to pick up and, and secure, uh, secure even more so going forward. I should make sure also to explain for our viewers, Bill 21 was, of course, I mean, that's how it's commonly known, but it, it basically was around uh, disallowing the use of religious symbols for people in positions of authority. And then Bill 96 is a more recent introduction that became law around uh, languages, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Melanie, your thoughts on the why now question. 
Well, I mean, I think that that's really the million dollar question of, of the hour is this kind of came out of the blue. But polling has been really bad for the Liberals all across the country. And I would argue that it's not just this isn't just a vote getter in Quebec. They're interested in, in maintaining their support, growing their support in the GTA, in Vancouver, in, with, with ethnic minority groups in particular. And they know that if they push on Bill 21, they can get more people to vote for them in those areas. The challenge is they have to see, and the reason why I think this is a trial balloon, is they have to see if this hurts them uh, too much with other people who support them in Quebec. So I think they're just floating this out there. It's a trial balloon. They're going to not really do anything until they see polling results come back on it. They're going to have us chattering class talking about it <laughs> and see what kind of comes of it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, they'll know whether they can afford to push further and actually uh, challenge Bill 21 more directly. If I remember back to 2019 and, and back to when Bill 21 was introduced, uh, Miriam, there was a lot of opposition to it and a lot of concern around it outside of Quebec. But obviously, as I pointed out, it wasn't just the Liberals then, it was all parties. I remember interviewing uh, Mr. Singh, I remember uh, Mr. Scheer at the time, like nobody really wanted to wade in mm -hmm. as specifically as the past few months, and especially since the Ford government made its announcement a few months ago around QP. Uh, your perspective on what might have evolved or is it just politics? I know Minister Champagne re rejected the premise of my question, but <laughs> but your thoughts on that? I think it's beyond politics, Fashi. Uh, 40 years since the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in Canada, you can expect that the Liberal Party, the governing party, is going to stand strongly in defense of it, is, you know, very proud to be the party of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And we can expect this prime minister to stand strongly in defense of fundamental rights. And so I think 40 years has something to do with it. Uh, and certainly, uh, while I'm not sure if Canadians are ready for a big constitutional conversation about the Charter and ways to update it, uh, if my experience last fall in my master's class at Trent University taught me anything, in light of Mr. Ford's preemptive use of the notwithstanding clause, there was a passionate, thoughtful conversation amongst professors, amongst students, grad students particularly, about, wait a minute, let's go back to 40 plus years ago. How was the charter introduced? Does it actually still protect us? Are there ways to update it? What is this notwithstanding clause? So I think it's an important time to have this conversation. And even if Canadians aren't really interested in what is likely to be a divisive conversation around constitutional debate, there's a lot of interest and a lot of strong opinions about Canadians' rights. The Charter is an important part of Canadian identity. And I'm glad to have this conversation uh, amongst peers, but also to have a conversation nationally. Emily, I'll, I'll just uh, give you the last word here. I'm wondering, uh, again, from like a political point of view, though, why you think, yeah. for example, Premier Legault reacted the way he, he, he did over the weekend. Like, what's, what's in it for him in that reaction? Yeah, so I, I think to go back to the question of why now, one thing we're forgetting about yeah. is that, so again, those laws, those two laws, Bill 96, Bill 21, are being challenged in front of the court. So there is bound to be uh, some, some, uh, some judge making a decision, uh, which would then lead to, to potentially this going all the way up to the Supreme Court. Um, so if, uh, if the timing is, is happening now, it's probably because those are, are due to, to, to arrive in the spring. And so it's preemptive, essentially, trial balloon to have a sense of what would be their reaction uh, if that's what would, they would be saying. Uh, the second thing I need to say is that it's also not the first time that you hear that kind of stuff. It's the first time maybe you hear directly from the prime minister, but David Lamedy has, has, has said before yeah, that, you know, although sense, they're yeah. not willing to intervene as, um, as the lead, essentially to lead a, a court challenge, that they would be uh, willing to intervene in a court challenge, uh, that the federal government should have a say in a court challenge. So in a way, they, they're kind of reiterating something that they're already said. It's just that in the context of a prime minister giving you an interview to La Presse, during a weekend yeah. uh, from profile is just creating yeah. a different kind of political reaction now. And François Legault, obviously, is just being François Legault defending his agenda. And, and uh, it's playing well <laughs> with his base, so there's no reason why he would do any uh, otherwise.
Yeah, I just quickly would add, I was listening to Mr. Minister Lametti rather uh, talk to reporters a few minutes ago, and yeah. he was saying, uh, kind of speculating on, oh, what are our options? Because reporters keep asking, well, if you're yeah. saying you're willing to look at stuff, what are the options? And he did say one of the options is to send a reference case to the Supreme Court, which is a bit more than mm -hmm. he said originally mm -hmm. around Bill 96, but you're absolutely right. He, had, he has said for a few months now that uh, the federal government was interested mm -hmm. in the outcome of that.